Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, my name is Konstantin Kaplana. I'm a PhD student at uh, LMU Munich, and I'll be presenting today the paper Coping Practices and the Spatial Dimension of Authority Design. So we have kind of a spatial theme here today. Um, and we're looking at the case of environmental policy enforcement. And um, kind of to get you into the topic, I want to tell you a bit of our the background we're looking at. Um, we're looking specifically at the enforcement activities in the context of the European Union's Industrial Emission Directive. And among other things, the Industrial Emission Directive also requires member states to ensure that certain industrial sites that pose a threat to the environment are inspected every one, two or three years. And to give you an indication what kind of burden and to implement that creates um, for the different member states or more specifically for a case, which is the federal state of Baden-Württemberg here in Germany, um, applaud all uh, locations in Baden-Württemberg that have to be inspected under that emission directive. And as you can see, there are quite a few of them. Um, there are actually over 900 different sites in 500 different locations. So that actually creates quite a burden to implement that policy requirement. And what we are kind of interested in now is if um, this creates a systematic and large scale differences in terms of the inspector's um, behavior in whom and how they prioritize um, those inspections that they have to fulfill. Because we know from the literature that um, especially the street level bureaucrats are often faced uh, with quite a high um, amount of requirements and also kind of suffer under low resources. So they often have to cope in some way to fulfill the requirements they face. Um, and then in a the second step, we're kind of interested if we find those patterns of prioritization, um, if they kind of, if implementers try to minimize the time and expenses associated with the work, or if they try to maximize the impact. And um, now I also tell you why we're looking at Baden-Württemberg, because we think that Baden-Württemberg is kind of a least likely case of finding that pattern. Um, Baden-Württemberg is one of the richest states in Germany and also one of the richest regions, I would say, in Europe. Um, it's led by a green government, which should kind of prioritize the enforcement of um, green policies. And, uh, and that goes for the whole of Germany. It ha has a strong legalistic tradition. So actually, we tend to find in the public sector in Germany that um, there's a tendency to abide by the rules. So these three things combined lead us to believe that that should be the least likely case of actually finding widespread coping. And kind of linking to the literature, uh, we have a lot of case studies on coping of um, street level bureaucrats and implementers, but we don't have many large end studies and that's what we're trying to do here. And to give your first impression, if there's actually a, an implementation deficit taking place here, um, here in the map you can see basically all the red points um, kind of represent implementation delays. So we can actually see that there isn't a perfect fulfillment of the um, policy. And now in the next step, like I said, we're kind of interested if we can see systematic patterns of coping here. And I already alluded to it. We are basically looking at two different coping practices. Um, the first one would be premium for efficiency and quantitative improvement. And essentially here we would expect that implementers in this case inspectors try to minimize the work associated with an individual case and try to kind of maximize um, the amount of cases they can handle. And um, one thing which we thought of, uh, which kind of differentiates the different locations here is actually the travel time. An inspector has to uh, kind of yeah, travel to the location um, to actually be able to do his job and the inspection. And uh, we have four different authorities here in Baden-Württemberg, which kind of handle those inspections. And um, that's uh, the cities of Karlsruhe, Stuttgart, Freiburg, and Tübingen, which you see on the map here. And um, I marked here all the associated industrial sites and, and the lines kind of indicate the distance from the authority to the site. And you can see that there's quite a variation in travel time. Here, some locations can be reached in under five minutes. Other locations um, would kind of require a two hour or longer drive even. So our first hypothesis is if we expect screening for efficiency, we would expect that the shorter the distance between the location of the responsible public authority and the industrial plant, the smaller the implementation delay should be. Um, secondly, another pattern which we could observe in terms of coping is screening for effectiveness 
or qualitative improvement. Here we would expect um, implementers to focus on high risk cases essentially, because that's a policy that requires um, the inspection of risky industrial sites. We would expect them to focus on those that pose the highest risk. And how exactly that um, is measured, I tell you in a second, but we have a good um, data on the actual risk imposed by a site. So our second hypothesis would be the high risk stemming from an industrial plant is more than the implementation relation fee. Now, coming to the data, well, um, the good thing about Baden-Württemberg as well, besides being the least likely case in our opinion, is that they are very transparent when it comes to the reporting of the data. So we have data from over 2000 inspections um, that took place since 2014. And we therefore are able to, to build models on an analog for around 1,500 cases, while we have to kind of uh, exclude the first visits, I'll tell you now in a second, because our dependent variable is the deviation from the legal due date. And to infer the, the actual deviation, we have to take the first visit, and then we know how often it should have been visited. And from there, we can calculate if there was a delay on the second visit. So if, for example, if a plan should be visited every year and the first visit uh, took place on the 1st of January and the second visit took place on the 10th of January the next year, we know that there's a delay. So essentially that variable is centered around zero. Zero would mean there's uh, perfect aligned with the legal due date and negative values um, would tell us that they came too early for the inspection and positive values uh, would mean a delay of the inspection. And um, for uh, independent variables, um, I already showed you the distance. Um, we measure this through the Google Maps API because we know all the um, correct addresses from the location so we can uh, calculate or estimate the travel time. We took here the travel time by car because we assume and we also essentially we know they drive by car. Um, and we also estimated traffic here. We set um, the same starting time for all locations. And then we kind of took the best estimate from um, the Google Maps API here. Finally, uh, coming to risk level, um, the risk level is um, kind of reported as well by the state of Baden-Württemberg. It's assessed based on a checklist essentially, uh, where location gets points, uh, for example, if it's surrounded by a very vulnerable uh, location or if it's handled very dangerous goods, and then it gets points and the higher the points, the higher the risk. Uh, that uh, the higher risk rank it gets. And essentially uh, a high risk rank indicates that it should be um, visited more often or inspected more often. So um, it's kind of counterintuitive. That's why I say here the, the risk actually is inverse measured here. So a risk rank of one indicates that it should be inspected every year, two uh, every two years and three every three years. So that's the measurement here. Um, additionally to that, uh, I would say that those are our main independent variables and also the ones where we kind of uh, hypothesize on the basis on. Um, we also have a set of controls, for example, yearly effects, effects and uh, sector effects and so on and so forth. Um, coming to the models, uh, we basically have two different estimation strategies. First of all, we estimate a set of simple linear models. Here we include uh, cluster robust standard errors to account for the nested structure of the data. Um, still, we kind of found that we have residual autocorrelation, um, spatial autocorrelation. So we therefore also estimate a set of spatial autoregressive models. Here we include um, a weighted um, spatially lacked dependent variable as an explanatory variable. Uh, we use an inverse distance uh, weight here, so close to locations should uh, have similar patterns in terms of um, the deviation we find. And essentially the weighting matrix can be seen here on the right. Coming to our results, we actually see that inspectors tend to cream for efficiency. So um, we can confirm hypothesis one. Here you can see the, the coefficient estimates. Um, and essentially we see that per hour driven um, around 16 days and get added uh, to the deviation of, from the legal due date. So the further away a location is, uh, the more likely it is to um, be inspected too late. Um, on, in terms of our hypothesis too, we actually find an inverse effect. So if there would be creaming for efficiency, we would see here 
um, a positive effect, but we see a negative one um, since we uh, our variable is uh, kind of inverse. That means um, that we have actually the pattern that the lower the risk from a site, the earlier it gets inspected. And that might sound counterintuitive at first, but it also kind of fits um, in the terms of premium for efficiency because um, sites with lower risk could be also easier to control for. So that may, might be another form of um, the effect of creating for efficiency manifesting here. But what are kind of the, the implications for that for us? Well, essentially, uh, we can take away here that the spatial location of the authority matters a lot. Um, when implementers tend to, to cream for efficiency and they go for the locations that are closest to them, one way of kind of solving the problems amongst others is putting um, the inspector closer to the location. So we kind of try to find the most optimized, uh, optimal um, location here. And we did this by um, calculating the cumulative travel time uh, for 100 uh, cities across uh, Baden-Württemberg. Uh, we took cities of a certain size because for the authority to be located there, there's a certain need for infrastructure and so on. Um, so we kind of looked at 100 uh, different cities and uh, looked how the cumulative travel time varies. And for the cumulative travel time, we weighted the locations based on the risk level. Essentially, and what that results in is, is a time um, that would be equivalent to the travel time in a time span of three years, because we weight a location with the risk rank of one, which has to be inspected every year um, by three. So essentially, uh, like it would be inspected three times in three years, a location of the risk rank of two, we uh, do the same, we assign the weight of two, and uh, of the risk rank of three, we assign the weight of one. So essentially, um, the cumulative travel time is an indicator of the time spent to control all the necessary locations in a time span of three years. And what we see here is basically um, sometimes it's just uh, there is no way to optimize. And we see that for the city of Freiburg here, is essentially Freiburg is the optimal location, although the cumulative travel time is the highest among all districts here. Um, but sometimes there's also a lot of room for improvement. And, that, and that's what we see for the city of Tübingen. Here we could reduce the cumulative travel time by a total of 108 hours. So that represents a 36% reduction. And considering that our effect of an hour of travel time was a deviation of 16 days, um, this can considerably reduce the occurrence of deficits. So essentially uh, what we're trying to, to show here in the paper is two things. First off, we see widespread coping practices that cream for efficiency, even in the least likely case. And therefore, that's something policymakers should account for when, when trying to build efficient policy, because efficient policy is only efficient if it gets efficiently implemented. And secondly, um, the takeaway kind of about the spatial location is that we need to consider the environment in which we implement. And we have to optimize in terms when we have inspection, for example, that we can uh, improve upon that by uh, optimizing the location where the inspections kind of start from. Yeah, and that's. Uh, everything from my side. Thank you for your attention and I'm happy to hear your comments and questions.